Um, the Black Death rapidly spread along the major European seas in Utrecht. It reached Ireland in 1348 and decimated the Hiberno Norman urban settlements. Hiberno Norman urban settlements. So let's see, the third calamity here. Uh, <coughs> the Black Death arrived. 1348 it, it arrived in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> it was a, a, um, a um, what would I say, event, a seismic event. Um, the Wars of the Roses in England affected Ireland heavily because um, the Irish um, noble houses became involved and it was very destructive of the Normans in Ireland, uh, unfortunately. They got dragged into it. Um, uh, one of the things that I didn't mention, but again, <coughs> most of you, can I ask you, how many people have toured Ireland? Most of you. Pardon? <laughs> most of you. He hasn't. He hasn't toured Poland, let alone Ireland. <laughs> Back to your own country. Ah, he was in Poland. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we got a few of them over there. We got fifty thousand poles or something like that, right? There. Something like that. They have their own news. Yeah. The Celtic Tiger. Yeah. I know it's the Polish Tiger, really. Yeah, there you go. But um, I'm just reading here. The authorities in the Pale grew so worried about the Gaelic's Gaelicization of Ireland that in 1367 at a parliament in Kilkenny, they passed special legislation known as the Statutes of Kilkenny, banning those of English from, descent from speaking the Irish language, wearing Irish clothes, or intermarrying with the Irish. Since, yeah. <laughs> Since the government in Dublin had little authority, however, the statutes did not have much effect. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but it's an indication of just how, um, how, how, how much it had become. One of the things that they don't mention in here, but I can tell you um, around that time, in fact, shortly after that, um, I forgot the, 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 the king, who, which I think it was one of the Edwards, um, <clears throat> passed a law that did have an effect, um, and that was that if they didn't withdraw from the fraternization that they were they were living in mud huts or whatever. Hopefully, they were comfortable mud huts, you know. But they um, they required them to build a tower house, um, a proper dwelling for an Englishman, or they would lose their lands. And within a very short space of time, maybe less than a decade, all the what you call castles in Ireland today all sprung up like mushrooms, mm -hmm. all dated to that period. Um, and they did it more to comply with the law <clears throat> than to actually live in them. And then later uh, in the 14 and uh, 15, 1400s, particularly in the 1500s, when the Irish started to rebel and the country was a lot more unsettled, they came in very handy because they retreated back into them. But originally, they were not terribly um, important. And um, so when you see them, and you see them everywhere, uh, they tell you a number of things. They tell you that um, the... the um, and by the way, that continued on much later. They, they did that. They built those kind of homes, even in non-Norman areas. Uh, Later, later, later on, it kind of became the signature, if you like, of the, um, the, yeah, the chieftains. The, you know, some of the the plans got out. It was like the Hoffman six pack. You know, the <laughs> those uh, six apartments that everybody built in East San Diego. <coughs> the plans were in the general domain, uh, public domain. Um, so that's certainly a feature that has. Uh, uh, remained down through the, the history and is, is there. Um, so the mill towns and those tower houses are probably 
the most common uh, evidence of the, the Norman period, apart from the big Norman castles. There aren't that very many of them, but the few that there are. Europe is dotted with them, but not as many in Ireland. Um, the other thing that was significant during that period was that crazy Scotsman, Edward de Bruce. <laughs> um, that's a weird, a weird event, uh, almost. Um, uh, it's just, just one of these. I'm trying to find it here. Um, uh, I don't want to mention anything, but, but um, he did a lot of damage in Ireland. <laughs> Unfortunate, or fortunate, I don't know. He's, he did it mostly to the Normans. Um, here we are. Um, Edward the Bruce, 1315, rallied many of the Irish lords against the English presence in Ireland. Although Bruce was eventually defeated in Ireland at the Battle of Fawhart near Dundalk, his troops caused a great deal of destruction, especially in the densely settled area around Dublin. In this chaotic situation, local Irish lords won back large amounts of land that their families had lost since the conquest and held them after the war was over. So, um, if you, if you hear, ever read or hear about that, that's the context in which it took place. It was a crazy, crazy thing. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've read much about it, but... Um, it was a very complicated thing too because it had to do with the English um, the battles that were going on in England um, uh, so we were always affected by the um, what was going on across the water let me see if there's anything else here that gives me a little clue that what might be um, this uh, this little historian dates a Gaelic resurgence from 1254 to 1536. Probably, probably true. Certainly, the 1536 is um, is true in that that uh, was the uh, beginning of the um, the um, Desmond uh, rebellion. We talked a lot about that. Uh, and remember, they were Normans. You know, so that the the big rebellion, the, the Desmond Rebellion, they were essentially Normans, but from an English point of view, they were Irish. Um, <clears throat> but the, the the fact that there was a Gaelic resurgence during that period tells you a lot. Um, that the Gaelic ways, language, sports, everything thrived under the Normans. So that's why we don't have a lot of um, antipathy towards the Normans. In many ways, the Irish look back in fondness to the period of the Normans, and many of our great, um, what we would consider patriotic Irish, are in fact Normans. Lord Edward Fitzgerald, um, and as you, you know, we honour the Fitzgeralds and the House of Leinster by using their house in Dublin as opposed to the later uh, parliament building as our parliament house. So um, the Irish nation, if, as it is today, um, considers the Normans uh, very Irish. They, 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 they do not consider them um, conquerors like they consider the English, the later English. Um, so it's important to remember that. And um, you'll often hear um, uh, people very proudly saying that they were Normans and that they had come to Ireland, and they're the proudest uh, Irish people um, you'll find. So, the War of the Roses, uh, as I said, I won't go into it much, but you can um, you can sort of be aware that. Uh, it was very destructive, again, on the Normans more than on the Irish because it weakened their great houses. 